my name is Mike Gaben and welcome to my KSP campaign. Um, this is going to be another episode with me bouncing between multiple missions, except this time I should be finishing those missions off, especially my uh, Min Miss mission. And I realize, I'm just realizing it right now, that it was five episodes ago. Can't believe it was that long ago that I launched that the, that crew out to do their flyby from Minmus, and they are they're going to be putting their feet or at least some parts of their bodies, hopefully, onto the surface. I actually, at the point of this voice recording, I actually don't know uh, whether uh, I get them onto the surface or not. I left them. Well, you'll see where I left them in just a little bit. But we, one way or another, that mission should be concluding in this particular episode. And the other mission that we should be seeing a conclusion for is uh, this rescue of Tamley Kerman mission. Right here, what we have is Jebediah and Glafia who uh, are on their way to rescue Tamley, and they are only about two hours away from their closest approach. You can see Tamley there in the yellow orbit. Um, and what I did, because, you know, the close encounter was, I don't know, in and around 30 kilometers. It's about two hours away. I really have no idea which way to burn to bring my my encounter down closer. So I just set up a maneuver node just a two or three minutes ahead of my current location, and I'm just basically shooting in the dark trying to see what I can do to bring this encounter down further these uh big rendezvous are always a bit of guesswork at least as far as I'm concerned but I ended up with eventually this 8.4 meter per second burn tiny little burn um it's always good to do these burns you know as far ahead of time as you can to reduce the amount of delta v so um that's why I'm doing it two hours ahead of my encounter but I ended up getting that encounter down between to under 10 kilometers and then a little bit of RCS actually brought that down to under five kilometers which I'm more than pleased with and uh, I think what I'll do is set an alarm to you know get me back to these folks in just a little bit hop over to the Kerpalo 2 and perform what will hopefully be uh, my last arrow breaking maneuver so the Kripalo now has gotten after two arrow breaking passes. It's apoapsis down to about 1.3 kilometers, which is where it's at right now. We're going to use a little bit of a retrograde burn just to sort of lower our periapsis just a bit. Again, the big thing I'm looking at is the max g-force that's being provided by trajectories. And I'm just going to use RCS because this is a very, very fine adjustments. Little puffs, oh, a little bit too far, 0.28. Probably be okay, but I know I can. I'm safe at 0.25, so I'm going to keep it at 0.25. So there we go. You can see the predicted orbit that trajectories has given us there in white, uh, which is getting pretty low. So I think this should be our last arrow breaking pass, and then after this, we can start to think about putting these guys down and picking a a landing spot. So we we time warp to periapsis, do our arrow break. Which, frankly, really always looks dramatic, but never is as scary as it looks. Again, I think, like I mentioned before, that I think the heating effects that Squad has in here are a little bit overkill, but oh well, looks cool. <laughs> and by this point, actually, the alarm for my closest approach of the Karayan to its closest approach with Tamley was, had gone off, so, you know, I better get this over with, and, and I did the same thing where I, I tried to use a little bit of body lift, which I am convinced does actually work, because I can see my apoapsis actually going down more quickly um, as soon as I uh, orient the craft in this way, but in the end, I ended up with my apoapsis down to about 328 kilometers, which is great. I think I can... Uh, can uh, drop them down to the surface from here, but uh, you know, given that the closest approach alarm for the Kryon had already gone off, I thought it'd be best to set an alarm for these guys' apple apps, which is only 15 minutes away. So I gotta, I don't know, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do between these two missions. Both of them are coming to a critical phase at about the same time. But let's go out to the Kryon and check on it first. Ooh, nice view there. Okay, let's see what the situation is. So we are a little over 47 minutes away from our closest approach. And the Kripalo is about 12 minutes away from its Apple Wapsis. So I got some thinking to do here. Um, 
thing is, is that their their relative velocities, like these these encounters, you got a lot of speed to kill. I mean, let's take a look at Tamley here. Tamley's going at 411 meters per second. And we are going at 114 meters per second. We have to match velocities. So, like, you got a ton of velocity I got to add on to this vessel. And I can't do that just at the last minute. So, I don't think, no, the landing, I can't land the Kerpalo. That's what I'm thinking about. Can I land the Kerpalo and then bounce back out here? And no, I don't think I can do it. And obviously, I can't let the Kerpalo go back into the atmosphere without me being with it. So, what I decided to do was to go back to the Kerpalo, uh, time warp out to Apoapsis, push. Earn prograde to push its periapsis out of the atmosphere so it's in a proper orbit. I can now leave these guys up here for a little while. I mean, their life support isn't infinite, but it's they still got uh, uh, several days still left, so it's it's by no means critical. And then I can deal with the rendezvous with Tamley. Okay, let's survey us the situation here. We have a relative velocity with Tamley of pretty much 300 meters per second. We have to kill that off. But we have to kill that off while keeping our close encounter indicators closer together. And we are about 30 minutes away from our closest encounter, which is around 8 or 9 kilometers. So I think what I'll do is I'll start off with just time warping to the point that I'm quite a bit closer. And then I started getting into, well, let's just burn retrograde and try to kill off some of this speed and I'll just kind of point around trying to not let those close encounter indicators get too far away but that didn't end up working all too well so I basically gave up on this kind of shooting in the dark type method and set myself up a maneuver node put it just in front of our craft uh, played around a little bit and ended up with this retrograde burn well, mostly retrograde. There's some other things going on. Uh, what's a little confusing is on the nav ball, it looks like I'm burning prograde, but that's because I'm on target mode and actually burning towards Tamley, which is, of course, in a retrograde direction. <laughs> a little bit confusing. Um, but that ended up bringing my closest encounter under two kilometers, which I am more than pleased with. And about 12 minutes away, I figure I could do the rest of this uh, without any further maneuver nodes, just by eyeballing and herding in that retrograde vector. So I time warped until I was about, oh, a little over three minutes away from my closest encounter. But, you know, with about 340 meters per second of relative velocity still to kill, I thought the best thing to do at this point would just be to burn retrograde. And I'll keep an eye on my close encounter indicators. I don't want them to get too far ahead of me or too far apart. Let's see, 1.8 kilometers, three and a half minutes ahead of me, two kilometers, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4. I better stop. I'm starting to lose them. Two and a half kilometers. Okay, well, what I'll do, and what I did after this, you just keep repeating. You let yourself get closer. Every once in a while, you kind of nudge the retrograde vector the way you think it should go. At one point, though, I was time warping, and I just completely lost my uh, target indicators altogether. You know, and by now here, I'm a, well, Tamley's only about 30 kilometers away and approaching at about 200 meters per second, so I got to start killing off velocity. So I just completely ignored keeping track of the uh, close encounter indicators, just looked at my nav ball, looked at where the retrograde vector was, Burn, 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 retrograde, trying to also push that retrograde vector towards Tamley. And all I want to do is get my relative velocity down, and then I'll just kind of figure it out. And I can see here they're starting to creep back, but then they pop out. You know, on these big encounters like this, everything's so sketchy. That's the whole thing. So, you know, you, you just got to kind of get in there, get in close. And then once you're in close, you can then fine-tune everything. So let's see. A uh, little... 25 over 25 kilometers away it does help having that distance indicator from uh, from uh, Kerbal Engineer up there at the top. Again, burning retrograde. All I'm doing is burning retrograde, killing off velocity. Let's see, you're down to about 100 meters per second. Distance is about 24 kilometers. 
this is feeling pretty comfortable. The last thing you want to do is wait too long to begin killing off this relative velocity and end up hurling past you, you know, having the target hurl past you, and then you got to chase after it. All right, 50 meters per second. Oh, look, and I got my close encounter indicators back. 2.7 kilometers. Ah, uh, easy peasy from here on in. Yeah, pretty soon I was out of map mode and watching Tamley come in here, time warping, getting a little bit closer, taking the odd moment to kill off some velocity or to uh, push my retrograde vector onto the target icon with the dab ball. Same sort of things that you see me do before. From here on in, this is very much like uh, the other types of rendezvous that you see me do in low Kerbin orbit. And uh, the only difference is now... This vessel is equipped with a little bit of RCS, so I thought, why not put Jebediah to the test here and actually try to park it right up in beside Tamley's shipwreck here. Now, RCS thrusters, um, when you put them onto your vessel, this is my first vessel with actually RCS thrusters on there as maneuvering thrusters as opposed to just simply as a backup means of propulsion, which is why they're on the uh, Kerpalo. Here, they're actually here for maneuvering. And when you put them on for maneuvering thrusters, what you want to do is you want to spread them out from the center of mass. Put them at the front, put them at the back, and put them kind of out from the central axis as far as you can. What you're trying to do is you're trying to generate torque with them. You also want to balance them, though, on either side of the center of mass because if it's, you know, if there's... If they're not that bad, I mean, the reaction wheels in Kerbal Space Program are pretty strong, so you can get away with a lot. But if they are very much out of balance and you try to move laterally, you'll end up just spinning your craft instead, which you certainly do not want to do. That is some mighty fine parking there, Jebediah. I, I love rendezvousing. I really do. I love the whole idea. You know, tens of thousands of kilometers traveled, speeds measured in kilometers per second, yet in the end, you know, you're just nudging up nice and slow, just a few meters away from your target. It's really cool to think about the fact that we're traveling so fast and so far, and in the end, it becomes a game of centimeters. Anyway, of course, Tamley's going to make her way over. And uh, I'm curious, remember there was an empty seat in that uh, soy juice capsule? So we're going to see if we can get her into the soy juice capsule and get her into that empty seat there, even though in the VAB this thing is only rated for two Kerbals. But in the interior view, there's a, there's a third seat. So Tamley's going to look through the window and she's like, I see a third seat, let me in! Let me in, you, you bastards! Fine. I'll go into the crappy capsule. There we go. Yeah, I guess it is. You can't get three people. So, oh well. So, uh, anyway, she's comfortable enough in that forward capsule, and then it's time to get ourselves out of here. So we'll use RCS to kind of nudge us away from uh, the shipwreck so that we don't have to worry about bumping into it when we blast out of here. And then it's just a simple matter of pointing the craft retro retrograde <laughs> and starting to burn to the point that our periapsis gets down into the atmosphere. Of course, once again, we're using the trajectories mod to help us plot our error breaking maneuver, which you've seen me do so many times before. I don't think I need to elaborate it any, on it any further than that. It's still going to be a few days for these guys to be able to uh, perform that particular error breaking maneuver. So. That gives us plenty of time to get over to the Kerpalo and get our Minmus crew onto the ground. And before we start our descent, just draw attention to a neat little mod that was drawn to, brought to my attention by uh, Baruch67, I hope I'm saying his username right, uh, called uh, Portrait Stats by DMagic. And uh, yeah, it puts these little icons telling you the class of each of your Kerbinauts down by their little picture as well as uh, stars to indicate their rank, and it gives you little stats on them and everything. So, yeah, that's great. So, anyway, let's take a look at where we are. And where our, oh, our periapsis is actually very close to the Kerbal Space Center. Oh, that's just about perfect. Let's time warp our way around then to Apoapsis. And then all we got to do is do ourselves a little bit of retrograde burning. And uh, once again, using the trajectories mod to try and predict where our landing spot is going to be. 
there that ought to do it just around that peninsula that's well to the east of the Kerbal Space Center though I'm still finding that trajectories is always predicting long for me I'm not sure if that's something that's just with me and the way I do things I'm not sure what it is but uh, here especially once I get rid of the service module and then take a look at my trajectory immediately afterwards you should you can see now that no now I'm just around the west coast of the continent that the Kerbal Space Center is on well to the west of the Kerbal Space Center so yeah, I'm not quite sure what that's about I tried to use you know to angle the pod a bit to see if I can get a little bit of lift happening to see if I can um, push that trajectory over to the east side of the continent but uh, I've been able to do that in the past with, with when I played with near and far near and fair airspace and and that kind of stuff uh, this might though have to do with the actual shape of this pod I might not be you know I might be doing as much because it's so long and tall it might this might not be working the way I want it to work and to be fair as well you know when I ditched the service module I ditched about three quarters of the whole vessel so its aerodynamic properties uh, very likely would have changed which could have easily messed up trajectory so that that could also be why there was the sudden jump but uh, I I don't know I'm, I'm just gonna always predict way long and then try and get into the ocean to the east I then noticed that well my altitude was getting down around 50 kilometers maybe I should check what's going on here and yeah I'm starting to get some of those re-entry effects um so perhaps I should just give up on all these things and just ride this thing down you gotta know that our Kerbinots though 17 days in space Oh, they're gonna be they just can't wait till this is done. Other than the inaccuracies in the projected project, predicted get it out, predicted landing location. Uh no issues with descent at all. Uh parachutes deployed normally. We recovered the vessel without any issue, and now it's time to check out our science booty. Yeah, three hundred and eighty six point four science, putting me up to three hundred and ninety three science in total. Uh, it should allow me to unlock a couple of nodes. Remember, I did uh, transmit a bunch of that min min science uh, well ahead of time. So this is just what they had to take along with them. And with those, I went with two new nodes. Um, a lot of good choices here, but I decided to go with precision propulsion because it gives me small radial engines uh, that I really like, especially the separatrons and those radial monoprop engines, which I really like. And also... This was a tougher choice, but precision engineering, um, which gives me better a better probe body and some of these small construction parts, but most importantly, it leads to electronics on the next level, which has that seismic sensor for more science, and most importantly at all, a Communitron 8888, which is a bigger dish antenna, which can reach all the way out to Duna, and the inner planets, uh, Eve and uh, Moho as well. And I really want to unlock this soon because I do have a Duna window coming up in about three dozen days or so. And I would love to be able to put something together that I can send out that way. And with that accomplished, I figured I got time to finish off just one more mission before this video is all done. And that is JunkSat 4, which I left um partially inserted in its orbit at uh sometime in the middle of the last episode it certainly wasn't at the conclusion of the last episode all i have to do is get the inclination right and i'm just about the time where it should be at uh you can't remember if it was the ascending or the descending node but the place that i thought would be the good place to make that inclination change well, it turned out that it wasn't the right place uh, because I had set my alarm for the approach of the equatorial ascending node as given to me by Kerbal Engineer, as you can see here, which is a little less than 20 minutes away. Um, that's not where I need to be. I need to be at either the ascending or the descending node of my target orbit that you can see here in orange. But, you know, I decided that, oh, well, I'm here. I'm going to go for it anyway, because uh, so I'll, I just pointed myself towards the south and just started burning until my inclination was the required 1.7 degrees. And I, I overcooked it and had to turn back. But even once I did get the inclination right, you can see here 
that my uh, target parameter, my orbital parameters are not going green. And that's because I still haven't met all the requirements yet. Specifically, what I'm not meeting is the longitude of the ascending node, which really, in hindsight, is not surprising at all. Where the ascending and descending nodes are, are nowhere near where they're supposed to be. So there was nothing left for it. What I had to do was time warp to either the ascending or the descending node of uh, my target orbit, and then do my inclination change, which finally did turn this thing green and allowed me to move on to phase two of this particular mission. Phase two being to shuffle this satellite out to Minmus, where I'll put it into a nice big orbit where it will be form part of a communication network around the, uh, the moon of Minmus, which, by the way, I've now gotten a remote tech contract for, so there's actually a contract associated with this, and it, you know, doing double duty with these satellites is, is a good idea. I'm doing the same thing with the moon. It should be able to set up this communication network pretty cheaply. So all I got to do now is set up my maneuver to get me out to Minmus, which turned out to be a little trickier than I thought it was going to be because the moon kept getting in the way. And then, I don't know, I ended up with, I decided let's try and see if we can use the moon as an advantage. And I ended up with, and almost went with, this rather convoluted uh, path that would get me to Minmus very efficiently using the moon as a gravity assist. Um, the issue being, it would take me 32 days to get to Minmus. And... With this particular vessel, Delta V, Delta v the fuel's not an issue, so there really is no reason to do this, though I, I don't know, I, I was kind of proud of this particular path, but uh, I decided to abandon that idea, went with a far more sensible and direct path to Minmus, which would get me there in less than 10 days. That burn being a little bit under two days away from, uh, from today, so... Uh, should be coming up pretty soon, so we'll set ourselves up an alarm for that to remind us to get back out here to perform this particular burn. And that's going to have to end this particular episode. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.